Good morning. Um, uh, welcome to our Friday morning uh, devotional and prayer time. As you can see, it's um, a casual day here at Faith Presbyterian Church. Uh, I woke up early this morning at around 4.30 uh, in, the, in the morning, and I couldn't go back to sleep. Um, and so I sat on the back deck and just enjoyed the wind, blowing through the trees, and listened to a couple of sermons. And I had a good, good time uh, praying to God this morning. Um, I guess the Lord wanted me to be awake and to really focus in on Him. And uh, one of the things uh, that I started thinking about uh, as I sat on the back deck were, the, were these crucifixion narratives. And, and the thing that, that really struck me is some of the, the, the minute details in these crucifixion narratives in, in the Gospels. You know, as, as we're looking forward to Easter Sunday, this coming Sunday, uh, tonight we're going to have a Good Friday service, um, and we're going to talk about the seven the seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. Last night we had Monday, Thursday, where, where we focused in on, on the Passover and the Lord's Supper. And as we're marching toward uh, Sunday morning, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, I can't help but to sort of think about some of the... Um, lesser-known details in the Gospels, that sometimes as you're reading the crucifixion narratives, you're almost tempted to kind of just pass over them, you know? And in one, one such case, case is found in, in Mark's Gospel and in Mark's uh, crucifixion narrative. I'm in, I'm in Mark chapter 15 and, and in verse 21. If you have a Bible handy, you know, want to join me. But Mark chapter 15, verse 21, uh, Mark writes, And they compelled a passerby. Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Um, just sort of a, a little context reminder. You know, this is uh, here, here. Jesus is required to carry his own cross, and traditionally, they they, they made um, the, the one who was condemned, the one who was to be crucified, to carry the cross beam uh, across their shoulders and, and over their outstretched arms. They, they would they would tie ropes. Uh, to their arms and, and, and attach the crossbeam to, to their arms and secure the crossbeam to their arms with, with ropes. And it was, it, was, it was incredibly heavy, even if you uh, weren't beaten within an inch of your life, as Jesus was. But Jesus was beaten within an inch of his life, and so as he was trying to uh, carry this heavy crossbeam, uh, he just couldn't make it. And so the, the Roman soldiers uh, grabbed it. This, this guy... Simon from from a place called Cyrene and it required that Simon carry the cross of Jesus for Jesus. But notice a little detail there. First of all, we're told he's from the country of Cyrene. But more importantly, look what else we're told. He's the father of Alexander and Rufus. Why is that important? Why does Mark Mark who is known for brevity, Mark, who, who, who wrote the, the briefest of all four Gospels, and, and Mark, who's always in a hurry uh, to tell his story, and yet at the same time, he's in a hurry to slow down. Remember I told you, you know, Mark would have been great in the South because uh, in the South we, we, we love uh, hurry up and get to the point, but slow down doing it, you know. And here Mark is, is he's in a hurry to tell the story, but in this little minute, minute detail, he also slows the narrative down. He mentions the sons of Cyrene. And why does he do that? The reason why he mentions the sons of Cyrene is because Mark's friends and family, those who would be reading Mark's gospel, Mark's church community, if you will, uh, they know, they know Alexander and Rufus. And it's very likely that Alexander and Rufus, they were a part of Mark's believing community. They are part of maybe Mark's house church where, 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 where Peter was the pastor. Remember, uh, John Mark was, uh, was probably Peter's travel companion, probably Peter's amanuensis, his secretary, and he's writing down Peter's sermons. And so Alexander and Rufus may have been part of this uh, close-knit uh, Jesus community, this believing community. And, and so why do I bring this up? Why is this important? I bring this up because uh, so many in our day and time will, will say, so many scholars, so many secular scholars, so, so many uh, historians will say that the, mar the, 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 the Gospels were made up, that someone made up these narratives, someone, someone invented these narratives. These, these are just legends. If that were true, then why would Mark and the other Gospel writers include these little tiny details? It's as if Mark is saying, look, uh, Rufus and Alexander's father was there. He was there. He saw with his very eyes what went down there at Golgotha, at Mount Calvary. Alexander 
saw it. Rufus or Alexander heard it, and Rufus heard it from their very father, from their father's own mouth. And it's very likely that that that, uh, that that Simon himself became a believer because of what he saw. Maybe as Simon was marching down the Via della Rosa on the way to Golgotha, maybe Simon was saying to himself, "Who is this guy? Who is this man called Jesus?" Why did they place that sign above his head that said, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, King of the Jews? These aren't legends. This actually happened. And so as, as, as we're, uh, we're sitting in this, uh, in this pandemic, I mean, on the way to the church this morning, I passed maybe one car on Highway 20. And usually I pass like 200 at 7.30 in the morning. Maybe as we're, we're looking at our, at our whole world being turned upside down because of this virus, we, we, we go back to these gospel narratives, and in these minute details, we see what really happened. We see the reality that we should really be clinging to. And that, that, is the, that, that is that Jesus actually walked down the Via Della Rosa. Jesus actually hung on that cross. Jesus actually died. And Jesus actually was raised from the dead. That is the reality for every Christian. That is the truth for every Christian. And so as we're, as we're uh, walking through this together, let us cling to the historical reality of what Jesus did for us, that your sins are forgiven, that mercy has been poured out on you, that grace has been freely given to you in the person and work of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you this morning to, to, uh, to cling to Jesus to see in the minute details of these gospel narratives. Read all of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and look for these minute details, these, these people that are named, and ask yourself, why are they named? Why are they mentioned? Because they actually saw Jesus hang on the cross, and they actually went out and told others about the crucified Savior. And they actually shared the good news of the gospel, because it actually happened. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the reality of the gospel. Thank you for the historical reliability of the gospels. And that in them, we can see you working in history. God, thank you for saving us through Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are watching this this morning. I pray that you give them strength. I pray that you uh, nourish their faith through the gospel. And I pray they walk faithfully before you this day. And that they're able to share the good news of Jesus, like Simon did, like Rufus, like Alexander. They were, they're, they're able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with their family members, with their friends, with, with the co-workers they're, they're, uh, they're, they're Zooming in with the Zoom conferences, conference uh, with this morning. Father, be with them. And I always think to ask your son, it's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I want to remind you tonight that at 7.30 we're going to have a Good Friday service. And that uh, this Sunday morning, we're going to have the, the Easter Sunday morning service at 11 o'clock. Um, so I, I hope you and your family are doing well. Uh, tune in, uh, participate in those worship services, um, and, and uh, pr pray, uh, pray for us, uh, your shepherds, as we continue to feed our sheep. Um, and please be, be, be sure to uh, contact me if you need anything, email, text, or call me and let me know how you're doing. In the meantime, I want to say, I just want to say, may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. God bless.